because people with type 1 diabetes are absolutely insulin dependent. Insulin is a lifeline for them. So they will have to continue to use insulin. The way we use insulin today and the available drugs today are far better than they used to be 10 years ago, but they are far away from where they need to be in order to be very effective. Therefore, this huge effort, both financial as well as other resources, that JDRF has devoted towards discovery and development of better insulin drugs and delivery systems because it's pivotal for uh, controlling glucose levels tightly in people with type 1 diabetes. The, the, prime, the primary aspect of improving insulin action today is to increase the speed at which it works. Currently available insulins and the way we deliver it is very, very slow. It takes too long to work and that is causing high blood glucose levels and the dangerous low blood glucose levels. We believe that just by adjusting the speed, improving the speed of insulin action, we can go a long way. And then we need to add further bells and whistles to achieve absolute high glucose control. Multiple. Uh, one is uh, industry interest and investment. It's not as large as it could be or should be. For example, the main insulin manufacturers do not seem to be, at least in the public domain, interested or working in identifying faster-acting insulins. Uh, whether it's a business decision, whether, whether it's a scientific challenge, it's hard to tell the difference. However, there are smaller biotech companies that now have an uphill task of competing. So that's one area, so lack of investment from major players, uh, pharma players. The second area is the regulatory environment. The regulatory environment in almost all aspects, devices and drugs, is not very conducive. It's a very long process, it's a very arduous process, and layered on top of that is added cardiovascular or heart-related safety studies that every drug company needs to do for getting a diabetes drug approved now. So, that's another uphill battle. And then at the end of the day, there is always uh, issues related with reimbursement, clinician adoption, patient acceptance, and other things. And those are also part of uh, the problems that JDR continuously continues to try to address. And we've had very, very good success in the past, and we hope we can build on it. Uh, Ask, 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 learn, learn, learn. The more you know, the better you're going to be, better off you're going to be. In controlling your own blood glucose levels, you're going to be aware, you're going to be cognizant, you'll do a much better job than being not aware of it. Secondly, if you can afford the time, help us. There's, we can definitely use uh, a lot of help from almost anyone that's volunteering. Help in not just raising funds, but reaching the word out, getting to the hill and doing a whole whole slew of things that JDRF is, is, is good at and is, is trying to do. Uh, and the third thing is, as you keep yourself informed, you'll be abreast of the developments and the newer products available in the market. And you can immediately ask your clinician, challenge your diabetologist to see if you can benefit from these new devices and drugs coming out. And if you're not aware, you're not going to be able to do it. As I was presenting today, there are some near-term goals, some mid-term goals, and certainly a lot of longer-term goals we have. So we have tried to balance it so there are deliverables, true deliverables, to the bedside in a continuum. Some of the near-term deliverables could be uh, testing some of the approved drugs that are not currently prescribed or evaluated uh, in a large way. So some of these readily available forms can be, uh, the patients can just go to their clinicians and, and find out if they can benefit from it. So those are quick wins. Some of the other quick wins what we are trying to do is try to reposition already approved drugs for other diseases such as type 2 diabetes, maybe other autoimmune diseases. Because a lot of these diseases, especially type 1 and type 2, have common pathways. Their original causes may be different, but the ultimate manifestation of the disease has a lot of commonality. We know there are a lot of type 2 drugs approved and out there in the market that are benefiting the patients. 
however they are not tested in type 1 subjects. Is there a way we can evaluate? So those are some of the near-term wins we hope to be able to evaluate and eventually uh, communicate to, to the patient population. And certainly there are mid-term and long-term goals. One of the, one of the longer-term goals is to see uh, the fruition of a glucose responsive insulin or what, I, what we also otherwise call as a refer to as molecular artificial pancreas. It's uh, relatively device free, uh, relatively hassle free, improves the quality of life and certainly uh, hopes to reduce the disease pathology. So those are, however, they're very early research, so they are, they are, I would say, the longer term goals. And then in between the two extremes, you certainly have some of the midterm goals that, that are subject in addition to the clinical science to regulatory environment and, and approval and adoption and reimbursement and other things. So it's a mixed bag that we're trying to do right now.